We've spoken on this channel at length about the many serious health problems of internal combustion engine vehicles, diesel vehicles, gasoline, petrol powered vehicles. Yes, they do cause cancer and numerous other health problems. But it's not until now we realized just how bad this problem really is. If you're growing things in your backyard, if you have chickens in your backyard, and you live in a suburban area in a city, there's a pretty good chance you're actually slowly poisoning yourself. After seeing this report, you should definitely reconsider what you do at your property and whether or not you want to keep driving an internal combustion engine vehicle. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. You know, you guys all know, surely by now, you know, right? The many, many benefits of electric cars. There is just so, so many benefits. Obviously, saving money, right? It's a better vehicle to drive. They last a lot longer. You can charge them with solar. The list goes on and on and on. You don't need to replace the brakes. You can use regenerative braking. That'll just recharge your battery, saving you money as well. You know, I can go on and on and on. And you also probably have all already seen my video showing you the incredible cancerous effects on firefighters in the US and in other countries around the world where firefighters have an increased risk of cancer by a factor of more than 70. In fact, life expectancy of firefighters is down 15 years. Because why? Well, because they start their fire trucks in the stations and then the diesel fumes are spread into the station and the firefighters then breathe in those fumes. Well, here's yet more evidence of the incredible damage done to the environment and to the humans living on this planet by gasoline and diesel powered vehicles. And frankly, this news is absolutely shocking. I couldn't believe this report. Why? Because you could essentially be poisoning your children in ways that are affecting their development. That is so bad. I just can't believe we haven't found out what's really going on until now. Now, although this problem has been found in Australia, it's probably much better. It's probably much worse in countries where there's a lot higher car usage in a smaller area. Here in Australia, we do have fairly dense cities, but they're nothing in comparison to many of the cities around the world where smog and pollution would be significantly greater. Now, as Australia faces a bit of an egg shortage, lots of people are buying chickens to have chickens in their backyard. And it's becoming really common here. It's common in lots of countries around the world. People have chickens and they think they're eating healthy eggs from these chickens, but actually they're poisoning themselves. A new study has found that eggs from backyard hens contain dangerous levels of lead up to 40 times higher than eggs bought from a supermarket. In this study published in the Journal of Environmental Pollution, researchers from Macquarie University and the Australian National University sampled 70 different domestic chickens from 55 different urban gardens in Sydney for blood lead concentrations and corresponding concentrations in eggs, along with the potential sources of lead contamination such as feed, soil, and water. The amount of lead in the soil was significantly associated with lead concentrations in chicken blood and eggs. The findings were then extrapolated out using the Australian Veggie Safe Garden Soil Database, which includes data from more than 20,000 samples to predict which areas of inner city Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane are likely to have soil lead concentrations unsuitable for keeping chickens or for probably growing vegetables for that matter as well. You could be doing either of those things in your yard if you live in a dense urban city and essentially be poisoning yourself with lead. Where's that lead come from? Well, we'll get to that in just a second. Newly published research found backyard hens' eggs contain, on average, more than 40 times the lead levels of commercially produced eggs, study authors Mark Patrick and others wrote in the journal. Almost one in two chickens in our Sydney study had significant lead levels in their blood. Similarly, half the eggs analyzed contained lead at levels that will pose a health concern for consumers. They noted, even low levels of lead exposure are considered harmful to human health, including among other effects, cardiovascular disease, decreased IQ, 
and kidney function, and that the World Health Organization has stated no safe level of lead exposure at all. Now, let's have a look at what lead actually does. The World Health Organization says that lead exposure can have serious consequences, in particular for the health of children. At high levels of exposure, lead attacks the brain and central nervous system, causing coma, convulsions, and even death. Children who survive severe lead poisoning may be left with intellectual disability and behavioral disorders. Exposure to high levels of lead may cause anemia, weakness, and kidney and brain damage. Very high lead exposure can cause death. Lead can even cross the placental barrier, which means pregnant women who are exposed to lead expose their unborn child, leading to potentially brain damage or other issues like autism, etc. This is possibly a cause of significant issues around the world that we weren't previously aware of. Why big oil? Does big oil want you to know about this? Are they aware of this? Absolutely. Of course they know. They know that gases from people's tailpipes are polluting the soil all over the world. But obviously, this is the kind of information that would more than likely be suppressed in order to make you think that there's nothing wrong with continuing to drive an internal combustion engine so that you can continue to use their products. So what has actually happened? Well, in inner city areas all around the world, land contamination has built up in garden soil over many years from exhaust fumes. These legacy contaminants can enter our food chain via vegetables, honeybees, and chickens, they wrote. These findings will come as a shock to many people who have turned to backyard food production. It has been on the rise in Australia spurred on recently by soaring grocery prices. While urban gardening is a hugely important activity and should be encouraged, previous studies of contamination of Australian home garden soils and trace metal into plants show we need to take immediate caution. I would caution you immediately, if you live in a dense urban city, to stop eating the eggs from your chickens. I'm sorry, you just have to. There's no other alternative. The researchers mapped out suburbs showing the lead risk for backyard chickens with areas closest to the CBD in all three cities in Australia are shown as having unsafe levels and those products coming from those gardens, all those chickens should not be consumed. Deeper analysis of the data showed older homes were much more likely to have high lead levels across soils, chickens and their eggs. They wrote, this finding matches other studies that found older homes are much more at risk of contamination from lead petrol, lead pipes, and simply from exhaust fumes as well. Now, the study mentions that the lead levels in chickens and eggs produced in commercial farms, which are not located in cities, is about one one hundredth of the lead levels found in the chickens and the soils in inner city areas. So, I mean, clearly that's a pretty good example of why you should not, of why you should consider what products you're eating and whether or not they're actually going to potentially harm your health. What's next? Well, here in Australia, urban gardeners, in other words, just average citizens who have gardens or chickens in the backyard, particularly in older inner city locations, are being urged to get their soil tested and potentially their chickens as well. People can do this at a veggie safe or through a commercial laboratory. The researchers wrote, soils identified as a problem can be replaced and chickens kept to areas of known clean soil. Now, interestingly, more than 400,000 Australians keep chickens in their backyards. I'm going to guess that over globally around the world, there's probably hundreds of millions of people that do similar things who could be being affected by the lead in their soil. Not only lead. I mean, what else comes out of exhaust in current cars? Sure, there's no lead anymore, but clearly cancerous particles, NOx particles, come out of the exhaust from diesel vehicles and from petrol vehicles as well. Are those particulates going into your soils? I don't know. Potentially could be, though. It's something that we'll probably not know until years into the future. Here's just, in my view, another reason why we need to move on from internal combustion engine vehicles. You know, embrace electric cars, especially here in Australia, where a lot of Aussies are still a bit resistant to change, to changing for the better, changing to solar, charging our own vehicles, which don't emit any toxic chemicals into the atmosphere, into our kids' lungs, into our lungs. The sooner we do it, the better. The great thing is, 
that the electric revolution is happening at an incredible pace. And it won't be until most of the world's citizens are driving something powered by the sun. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.